Photography TV. In our next two shows, we're at Photo Mart's Summer Workshop, which is a trade show aimed at professional photographers. Keith Trainer is here and will be demonstrating a new Sony printer, and Sony products will also be the topic of discussion when we talk with Josephine Gibson, DP Account Manager at Sony UK. We'll also be talking with Lewis Martindale of Photo Mart about the show and speak to some of the visitors here today about what's good about the show and what's not. And of course, we'll have our usual features of the news and the critique slots. But first, as we head for summer, hopefully, more of you are heading outside with your family in search of great photos. But just how do you achieve great results away from the security of the studio? Well, Angelina Giorgio, a lifestyle photographer, tells us more. Okay, stop there, Ellie. Stop there. Bring Cameron into you and see if you can look at each other. Hold hands and look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are such a good model, Cameron. Yeah. Yes, you are. Tell me a bit about your um, history and background. Well, I've been doing this for about 10 years. I don't know where that's gone. And um, before that, I was a fashion designer and okay. a costume designer. Um, so I'd, I'd worked freelance and had my own business making wedding dresses. So I suppose I knew about the wedding dress field. But I had an accident um, and I damaged my neck, so I couldn't sew for long periods of time. Right. Um, and my friend who, when I was getting better, my friend who was a wedding photographer said, oh, come out with me and tweak dresses and be my assistant. And um, he put a camera in my hands and I chopped lots of people's heads off. But I thought, actually, this is fun. I like this. I'm getting out and meeting people. So I kind of got into it really accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so what's made you then stick to doing photography outdoors? Um, originally, it was cost. Um, I lived in a flat, I didn't have much money, but I wanted to get into portraiture as well. Yeah. So I decided, well, you know, the world's a stage, yeah. let's use it. <laughs> and people feel more comfortable in an environment that they know. Yeah. It's more of a special photograph to them if they've always walked the dog in that particular park or, you know, their home has got a nice garden. It, it becomes, um, they own the picture, it's part of them, it's not just a big white background. So what are the difficulties with you not having the security of studio and lighting? Rain. <laughs> Rain. <laughs> Good British weather. Oh, yeah. I mean, although you can make that quite funky, you know, put Wellington boots on and get yeah, the kids yeah. in jumpers, but it's whether the family or the couple want to play the game. That's the only problem. And then, of course, you've got uh, sunshine, like we had today. There's yeah. a lot of bright sunshine and then kind of clouds. and so There's a lot to that. But the, the pros, basically, it's fantastic. You can go anywhere, yeah. and people are much more content and happy. Um, and it's not sort of, you know, bang, 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 one person in, one person yeah. out, you know, and, uh, and it's just more personal. So what will you be looking to do today? We've got two, two kids, one, one's a lot younger than the other, one's one, one year old, I think. So how will you do, deal with them? Um, well, obviously we're in a really great rural area, so yeah. walking, walking is great, um, getting the older one to leave the little one, that always looks really good from a distance. Um, there's a lot of trees, so we can get a lot of uh, you know, shots under the trees, so there's shade and yeah. stuff, um, so there's quite a lot we can do here. Right then, so what kind of kit will you be using today? Well, I use Canon, um, simply because I've never got into Nikon. People always ask, why Nikon, why Canon? That's where it is. I just started out like that. Yeah. Um, I've got a 5D, Canon 5D, um, which I love. It's really good. <laughs> I love it. And um, it's a really good weight. I've got the battery pack on the bottom because it just really balances it out nicely. And then the lens that I use most of all, generally when I know the children, they're a little bit older, I don't have to keep back from them too much, um, I use the 24 to 70. Okay. Um, 2.8 lens. 2.8 lets it in more light, obviously. So that's a really good um, basic set. I also use a longer lens, um, especially if the kids are running and they're kind of far away or you don't know them very well and they're a little bit yeah. shy, so you're not so in their face. I use the long lens. It's the 70 to 200, again, 2.8, so that you can really open it up and get the light in. Um, again, Canon, but Sigma do lenses just as good and not as quite as expensive. Yeah. So. And I know you haven't used it today, but you've got a flash here as well. Yeah. I tend to use flash. I mean, this one's, um, this one's made for the Canon 5D, and it's the 550EX. Um, it's a really good bit, bit of kit. Um, I tend not to put it on the camera if I know it's a really good light, it's re a really good day, and I don't yeah. need to mess around too much. If it's a very bright day, obviously you don't want the children to be looking into the light because they're going to squint and get fed up quickly. So what you do is you have the light behind them, and then you have to fill their face with a little bit of flash just to light them up. So um, would it w otherwise, would they be quite be in shadow? Oh, you okay. get the whole silhouette feature, which which can work sometimes, but obviously you want their eyes and their face to light up. And then you've finally got a reflector. Yeah, I, I use that occasionally, sometimes if the parents
sensor here or someone else is here to hold it because you can't hold and take photographs. And, and again, it's just if you want to bounce some light back into um, the child's face. If they're sitting down, um, probably not the younger ones so much, but if they're sitting down and they're leaning against something and you just want that really nice like white yeah. to sort of lift the face and, they're, and you're doing a close-up, that works really well. So what camera settings do you use then? I tend to use, well, on Canon it's AV, but it's aperture priority. Okay. And basically that's um, opening the aperture up and letting more light in. And what that does is it blurs the background and it brings the, the person, the object, the subject, right out yeah. and blurs the background. So that, that becomes part of, you know, it's, yeah, they jump they out yeah. and they can, they can really stand out then. And the ISO settings? I, ISO settings I tend to change quite a lot because obviously being outside you have to keep changing. Yeah, the light, um, the sun. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that you're always going to have to change. But in general, 400 is great with movement and running around and lots of kids running everywhere. Um, and then just drop it accordingly if the light comes out. You know, just keep playing, playing about with it. And what about the white balance? White balance, I, my theory is just keep it simple. Yes, yeah. you can mess around if you, if you want to. But just keep it simple because the subject is moving a lot and they're going to get bored quickly. Yeah. So I keep it on automatic white balance. I mean, I can do that because it's digital. Um, you ten, you know, most people tend to do something in Photoshop or in some kind of program. Yeah afterwards so you can play around with it a bit more absolutely so that's great what kind of top tips do you have for say amateur professional photographers doing this type of work um, patience yes. <laughs> patience <laughs> with children yes. um, the young ones get bored really really easily yeah. um, and very quickly you've got a time slot um, I try and meet if I don't know them if I haven't met them before I don't go straight in um, I like to sit and chat to the children chat to the parents so they feel a bit more comfortable around me and then get the camera equipment out yeah. um, and then you've pretty much got about an hour slot before they kind of go down the other side and get bored and whingy and don't want to do it anymore so and um, that's great for like for professionals, but say mum and dad at home, any tips for them? Well, mum and dad obviously know their children much better, so they probably don't have to direct quite as much as I do. Um, and um, do you maybe try a little bit more reportage you know, sort of just get them out in the garden playing around and playing with a toy so that they've got a subject that they're concentrating on. Step back and just watch, because you know your child more. You know you're going to know that smile that they do when they're fed up or yeah. they're happy. You're going to know them more. Okay, so on a more serious note, taking photos of children in public, what are the issues of that? It's something we have to be a bit careful about now, and I would say take it easy, especially around um, public, public, public areas, basically, yeah. where there's a lot of children and a lot of parents, because people are getting very twitchy now, playgrounds, beaches, etc. Something we really need to educate the public on. Um, uh, you know, if you're a professional, you're not going to, to, to damage your reputation. It's no. just not worth it. Um, there are checks that you can do. Yeah. Um, CRB checks. Okay, and what's that? Right, that's, that's from the criminal... Records Bureau. Yeah. Um, and what that is is they, they just basically do a background check on you and you get a certificate. So that sort of proves, you know, I'm okay, yeah. I'm not dodgy. Yeah. People, um, people who work in nurseries um, yeah. very, very often have them and a lot of corporate organisations ask for you to show your CRB check. So, you know, people are checked out there, so don't worry. Thanks, Angelina. I'm now joined by Photo Mart Managing Director, Lewis Martindale. Hiya, how are Hi. you doing? All right, thank you. So, how often do you arrange these kind of events? It's uh, about four times a year. Four times a year. Yeah. Are they always successful? Very. Very. I mean, uh, this is one of the uh, best things we've done for the last few years, that uh, we thought about uh, this type of uh, seminars, and uh, we find out that people, that are, they need this type of uh, seminar where they can, uh, we give them more knowledge about uh, the new uh, era of the event photography. Yeah. So we find that uh, it's, it's successful and we, we need to do more actually. And there is a big major uh, corporates, uh, they need to, to come in the future. So for example, we are holding the next semi seminar in uh, September where the major names uh, they are asking to be with us. But there have been so many other trade shows. Why do you do this? What's in it for the customer and what's in it for you? It's uh, knowledge. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, where you find, uh, for example, other uh, events and seminars uh, done somewhere else uh, in the UK, they, they need uh, more knowledge uh, and how to, to, how to do it, actually. Mm. With us, it comes from years and years of experience. Uh, years and years of uh, knowledge about the business. Uh, we were uh, the, one, the first one in, the, in this type of uh, photographic uh, business where we push for the event markets. Uh, so we find out that uh, we are 
actually number one in this, uh, in this type of uh, service. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll be joining Lewis later on in the day to find out how it's all been going. But first, let's see what the visitors think about the day and what they expect to get from it. I'm here because it's a good value day and I'm looking to learn lots of different seminars. Understanding lighting a bit better, getting, get to know how to deal with subjects more, more sort of fluently, really, and just to get a bit more out of my photography. Really. Just to learn a little bit and uh, meet up with a few other people. To learn some more about lighting. Get some information how to, to get the best uh, quality of uh, shooting. I just wanted to learn, pick up some ideas, meet some people. We're learning more about the technique and how to set up and how to create different moods, definitely. Hello and welcome back to part two. I'm now joined by Josephine Gibson, who's DP Accounts Manager at Sony UK. Hi Jo, you alright? Yeah. yeah. So what are we looking at from, with Sony today? Right, we've got our full product range um, on display. Um, we're particularly looking at our DR200, which is our newest dye sublimation 6x8 printer. Um, How is it different then from the old one? The way it differs is it's slightly faster, um, it's got higher print capacity, so you can get more prints um, out of the printer. Um, and also, unlike any other printer on the market, it does produce a very good luster pro matte finish. So what kind of application can this be used for and where would you find it? Okay, so particularly today we're talking about uh, the events market, so events photographers would use it on site, um, but it can also be applied with the luster and uh, pro matte finish into the portrait market, as well as the retail market, which is more uh, for bespoke kiosks and people coming in and printing off their photos. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure we'll see you in action later on, but uh, thanks very much and I'll catch up with you later. So we could, for instance, have just picture on a, on a couple of a couple there, like you two guys. And the one Keith Trainer is running a workshop today on event and social photography. I've also somehow been dragged up on stage to be his very first victim. If you'd like to come and stand about here for me, please, Sean. Okay. Uh, is it Mila? Mila, he's going to take your photograph. Okay. okay. So let me just turn this projector off so it's not dazzling you. Okay, first of all, okay, all you need to do is press this button here, okay, focus half length, which means I want it from the waist upwards, okay. So all we're going to do, Sean, is not even going to pose you on this, this is a test shot of you, okay. Remember what I said, talk to her, keep her interested. Talk to her. Hi, Sean, come on, work it for us, Sean, come on. I said, whoa, there you go. Okay, so straight away, it's into the, it's come over here into the software. So what I need to do is I'm just going to check that. What we need to do, Mila, is get half length, okay. So crop in a bit closer. So if you need to, just stand back a tiny bit. Keep her interested. And just, this is just a test. Whoa, there we go. And it's in again. Much better this time, Mila. Okay, so the picture is now on the screen. Right, I'm just taking the border off, guys. Just for a second. Okay, this time, Mila, what, um, Sean, what I'd like you to do is... Stand there like this to your right, okay? <laughs> so look at this, look at this. That's it, Mila, get that shot. Work it, come on, Sha. Woo, that's it, cool. Okay, guys, so what's happened now is we've taken a picture of Sha. She's coming to the left-hand side, as you saw before. Um, I just need to drop her out of the software. Okay, so now I know that Sha likes uh, Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas. Is that right? Yes. Yes, okay. So now we've got a picture. Keith, can you just suggest that for Now we've got a picture of Sean looking at Caesar's Palace, okay? And this time, what can you do? I want you to do hula hula for me, okay? What? Hula hula, okay? <laughs> like this, okay? That's it, she's got it. Okay, we love to stand. Go on, Sean, work it, Sean. Hey, cool. And again, see, we're having a bit of fun with Sean now. We're getting to do this for us, okay? So, Keith, tell me a bit about what you do. Right, uh, my business is called Event Portraits. We are uh, event photography specialists, meaning that we photograph events in general, social events generally. Uh, we used to do uh, sporting events, but tend to concentrate on the social side. Uh, we do uh, currently lots of school proms we're doing at the moment. Um, they're very much in, and I uh, suggest that people get into that side of the event photography business. I also run training days in a studio in Manchester and work uh, alongside Sony, Express Digital, and uh, Photomart to help train photographers. And how do you think today's gone so far? So far it's gone really well. There's been lots of interest. 
Uh, people are warming up to the idea of using new stuff like the green screen um, to get that new kind of edge on the market and uh, people have come up and just said it's been a really good day so far. So this new printer, why should that be on the list of any photographer's uh, equipment? Okay, the unique thing about the, the Sony UPDR200 is that uh, you can print not only gloss on there, but you can also print luster. So it makes the printer universal. You can use it at events because it's very fast. I think it's 15 seconds for an 8x6. It's very easy to load, but not only can it, it's easy to load and it's fast, you can also print luster, which means that if you've got a studio, or even not studio, you could use it for wedding albums to print up to 8x6. You can use uh, the prints in a studio, where uh, traditionally you wouldn't use gloss in a studio. And this, is, this kind of thing is perfect for events because you've been using a green screen today, haven't you? Yeah, we've been using high key, my high key setup and also the green screen, absolutely perfect printer. Yeah. It's a really fun idea, I think, for events to have all the different backgrounds. And yeah, it's new. Um, there is some companies in the UK at the moment doing green screen, but um, there's it, very much a market there for it, and we even cover it into our business now. So hopefully uh, people get on board and start using green screen, uh, get the Express Digital software, and we really, uh, fulfil people's, uh, you know, what they want to do, ambitions and stuff like absolutely. that. Absolutely. So what are the top tips you can give people? Uh, my top tip for today would be uh, uh, professional, yep. uh, sort out your workflow, make sure your workflow is fast, get people to view their images very quickly and to produce their images quickly. The quicker you produce their images, the quicker you'll get the money and the, the quicker you'll build your business. That's it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I'll probably see you later on in the day. And uh, now I'll go and get some food, I think. As part of the Bureau of Freelance Photographers' Campaign for Photographers' Rights, Every UK member is being issued with a BFP blue card, a card that asserts photographers' rights to take pictures in public places. The card, which is enclosed with the June's issue of BFP's monthly market newsletter, may help members who find themselves being stopped from taking pictures in public places. In such circumstances, the Bureau feels that members may find it useful to show the card to the particular police officer, security guard or other official. The card is written in simple language, it's short and to the point and has been legally validated. It's small enough to be slipped into a camera bag or pocket, but the thing is, will it work? Will the card have the desired effect? BFP Chief Executive John Tracy says, with the increasing number of members being stopped by police officers, or more commonly, police community support officers, from legitimately taking pictures, we felt we had to do something. Alamy, the largest stock photo site on the web, is launching a new scheme offering customers the chance to buy images for limited users for a nominal fee. Aimed at new users like teachers or bloggers who don't normally buy pictures, the limited use scheme is initially being trialled in the UK only. Customers looking for photos for certain web uses such as blogs and social networking sites or for educational uses like classroom presentations can buy from Alamy for as little as 60p per picture. Contributors to Alamy have the option of making their images available for limited use as well as being sold conventionally, giving them the opportunity to earn additional income without cannibalising their existing sales. Alamy CEO James West says this opens up our encyclopedic collection to customers who can't afford conventional licences. It also allows our contributors to compete in the low-cost markets without undermining their existing revenue streams. Printing on a budget. Epson have launched the new Epson Stylus S20, a stylish, compact and affordable printer with individual ink cartridges. The Stylus S20 is a personal document and photo printer with individual ink cartridges that combines quality, versatility and economy. With a contemporary and compact design, the S20 is engineered to meet the demands of everyday printing in the home, often a benefit only found in more premium products. The printer comes with individual ink cartridges from just $5.99 each. This supports cost-efficient printing as consumers only need to replace the colour they use, minimising ink wastage. It also prints borderless photos up to A4 and up to 26 pages per minute in black and white and 14 pages per minute in colour. The Epson Stylus S20 will be available from July 2008 at an RRP of $39.99 including VAT. More information is, of course, on the Epson website. Now, starting on September 26, 2008, the EU Battery Directive will make battery disposal more environmentally friendly. Consumers are being encouraged to recycle their disposable batteries at collection points. 
In the next four years, the UK must recycle 25% of all batteries, up from the current rate of only 3%. Unirotter's rechargeable batteries remove the need to go to collection points and cut down waste from the packaging and non-recyclable battery components. Unirotter marking the countdown to the EU battery directive with the launch of a new range of chargers. With gadgets as an everyday part of people's lives, 660 million batteries end up in the landfill site each year. The reliance on portable power means the last thing you want to worry about is carrying spare batteries. Uniros are making battery recharging a way of life with a new range of chargers that allow you to recharge your batteries anytime, anywhere. Now, if you're in a hurry, use the new 15-minute charger at home to save time and the environment, of course. And then when you're shooting outdoors, you can recharge your batteries with a new Uniros solar charger. Pentax have launched a new cashback promotion on their K20 and K200D digital SLR cameras. The promotion, which runs until the 31st of August 2008, offers all UK and Ireland Pentax customers cash back on any K20 and K200D camera and lens kit. To claim your cash back, all you need to do is download the appropriate form from the Pentax website. So I'm going to bring you into these trees now and we're going to do some different things in the trees. We're going to get you leaning up against the trees and kind of walking through them and doing something a bit different. So what's made you choose this spot? I like the tree with the bark and there's kind of texture and everything. Yep. So nice close-ups with sort of rural um, and uh, Ellie's head against the tree. But also there's a clump of trees so we can, we can do different scenarios here. So we can get um, Ellie walking through the trees, looking around them. There's quite a lot we could do with a clump yes. and just stay in one place. And notice you seem to be picking, seeing that it's a sunny day, but it's easier, is it, in the, in the shade? It is, because sunny days give you really harsh shadows. Okay. Sometimes you can't help it and sometimes that can be quite funky if you've got some glare, some yes. sunshine glare. But I think that's something more to play with. You have to have more time for yeah. that. Shadow just makes things easier and quicker. You can edit it later. Yeah. Suppose, and bored children don't get fed up <laughs> too easily. So, right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go for it. Are you ready, model? Okay, Ellie. Big smile. That's good. How about looking just slightly over there? Look at that tree there. Bring your head round. You can bring your head round. That's brilliant. That's nice. Drop in just a little bit. That's fab. That's good. We like that. That's nice. Now with, now with a smile. That's fab. Really good. Good stuff. So what shot are we going to try now? Right, I like this line of trees. So we're going to get Ellie in a different pose, looking round the end of this tree. And then I'm going to shoot along here and get Ellie looking kind of casual down at the end of this row of trees. Fantastic. OK, Ellie, can you just come into the tree here for me and lean against the tree like you're looking round it? Brilliant. Bend that leg just a tiny bit. That's brilliant. Great. OK, Ellie, that's good. Nice and moody. <laughs> So are you now trying to get all three trees into this shot? Yeah, um, we probably won't get much of this tree in, but I'm just trying to get a focal point going into Ellie with some, you know, the tree bark and some texture yeah. and stuff. OK, Ellie, that's great. Just drop your hand a tiny bit so I can see more of your face. Brilliant. Not too much. Up a little bit. Brilliant. And then really, put, really peek round, really peek round. Peek round that tree and look at me. That's good. So we've got kind of some of the tree and then Ellie. Oh, really nice. Yeah. It's the kind of thing that look really nice in black and white as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because the texture. Mm. here sent in by one of our viewers and we're going to get Angelina to take her expert eye and uh, tell us what you think firstly about this black and white one here. Okay I love the black and white um, it's definitely my kind of style um, it's very photojournalistic and I like the way it's very grainy and mm. I, love, I love the black and white. Um, what I would say is I would do one of two things I would either crop into it 
or pull out and make it more photojournalistic because at the moment it's kind of a halfway house. Okay. She's got a little bit missing off her feet and there's quite a lot of sky. But I love the, I love the business and this is a classic example of using aperture priority because the, the foreground, the subject is coming out and the background is all blurry and I love it. It just helps as well that she's in white. Yeah. It really stands and she's out. not looking at the camera, which is great. I love it. It's really photojournalistic. I love it. Okay, so moving on to the colour photo. Okay, this is really nice. Um, it, we can't always change our environment. Um, you can't move trees and stuff, obviously. So what I would say with this one, my, my eyes are being drawn to the yellow in here. Um, so if, you, if we could take the shot without the yellow behind, I think it's probably a toy, but that would be kind of nice because then you're focusing right in on the, on the face. Yes. Um, there's quite a lot of grey around here, so I'd probably want to crop it in just a tiny bit more. Yep. Um, and you could possibly use flash because this looks like a tunnel. You could try a little bit of filling flash that you're just li lighting up the, the tunnel a, a little bit. But that's a fine line because it could work or not because you might make her darker. So. Definitely. And I suppose that's the thing with social photography. You're literally snapping the picture, taking it as it is. So it's hard to criticise really sometimes. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, and um, obviously there's things that you can do in Photoshop or any of the other programmes. Yeah, with um, anything. You know, that's the joy of digital. Absolutely. Right, great. Thank you very much. Well, a busy day for Lewis and the Photomart team, but are they pleased with the way it's gone? Lewis, you happy? Fantastic. Yes? Yes. Beautiful day today. Very busy. Very busy and everybody happy. Great. And what's next for Photomart? Uh, another event. Yeah. Uh, it will be at uh, September month and already we are booking people for it. Fantastic. Well, it seems like the visitors are very happy, but let's find out what they thought of the day. It's been very informative. Um, I've actually enjoyed the, the Bone Studio Red session as well. They were very high standards, yeah, it was good. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's told me pretty much everything I need to know. A few new ideas, uh, maybe I haven't uh, thought of exploring before, but did the travel before. So, uh, good ways to make money on the moon. Uh, but they're all so helpful. It's really good. Yeah, I recommend it to anyone. I mean, uh, we're professional photographers, but I'm sure this will be a great place for keen amateurs as well to come. I think there's probably a few of them here too. But yes, really, really great event. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks again, Lewis, for allowing us to film here today. And remember, there's more from Photomart in our next show, which will be out in around four weeks. Then we'll be talking to fashion photographer John Gray, Heath Lassiter from Express Digital, who will be demonstrating a great new software package, plus our news and features and a whole lot more. We'll see you then.